Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord, my name is John Nathan Owara and I'm blessed to bring to you again this segment of Embrace. Today, we're handling a topic that is very common with very little understanding. Many people have tried to explain it in very simple language, but I will try to make it simpler. And we are talking about discipleship. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that discipleship is a core program of ministry. The ministry that you set before the, the disciples and the apostles. We ask that Lord, you help us understand this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this segment of Embrace. And like I said earlier, we are doing discipleship. What is discipleship? I hope that at some point we'll also do evangelism. But let's talk discipleship. What is discipleship? When someone says you are a disciple, what does that mean? There are many definitions to that. But let me make it as simple and as plain as possible. Discipleship, what is it? First of all, discipleship is following. The definition is a follower. As long as you are following, you are a disciple. So the other alternative uh, ex explanation for discipleship is following. But I, I like using abbreviations and I'm going to use the word discipleship written D I S C I P L E S H I P discipleship. What is discipleship? Let us go to Matthew chapter 28. We'll look at verse 18, 19, and 20. And this is what it says. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So Jesus has resurrected. He comes to the disciples and he tells them, all authority has been given to me. And he then sends them, having walked with them for three years, them having followed him three years, he comes and says, all authority has been given unto me. And then he gives them that authority. He sends them out to go and do exactly what he had done with them in the three years. What is it? When we talk about the disciples of Jesus, who were they? Why did they follow him? Why did Jesus then send them out again? Let's try to answer that with the acronym or the abbreviation discipleship. I also know that Paul, writing to the Corinthians in his first letter, chapter 11, verse 1, he says this, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Many versions say, follow me as I follow Christ. So Paul, an apostle, somebody that met Jesus head on, one on one, is instructing us, saying, follow me as I follow Jesus. So we therefore define discipleship from the two verses we have read, discipleship being following Jesus Christ, for us who are, who are, who are believers in the Lord Jesus. You can also be a follower of something else. You can be a disciple of anything else. But I'm not here to talk about that kind of discipleship. I'm talking about disciples of Jesus Christ. So what is discipleship? Discipleship, D, is for direction. You must have direction. When you are a disciple, you have a direction. You have somebody that you are following. So when we talk about disciples of Jesus Christ, we're talking about people who are walking in the direction of Jesus Christ. And when you walk in the direction of Jesus Christ, there is development. We're still on D. 
there must be development in your life. If you are following Jesus and there is no change in your life, probably you're not following Jesus. Because many people say, I am a disciple of Jesus, but you don't see change in their lives. They still have the same manners they had many years ago. They still have the same behavior. You see them, no growth, no nothing. That is not, that's not following Jesus. You are not a disciple. You're probably following someone else. Or you think you're following Jesus. So, direction, and as you get direction, as you follow Jesus, there must be development. And let me tell you, as you follow Jesus, you must be dedicated. So D is for direction, for development, and dedication. You must be dedicated. You must be committed to following Jesus. This is discipleship. If you are not following Jesus, if you are not walking in the direction of Jesus, if you are not developing in your personal life, in your family, you are not seeing development. In your financial life, you are not seeing development. You are not dedicated then you know that there's something wrong. You are not a disciple of Jesus. So D is for direction, development, and dedication. I is for increase. When I talked about development, a disciple must increase in knowledge, in wisdom, in your relationship with men and your relationship with God. There must be increase socially. There must be increase financially. There must be increase even morally. Now, if you are increasing in the negative morality, then you're probably following Satan. But if you're following Jesus, there must be increase, and the increase must be both spiritual and physical. We have people who have been following Jesus, they have been claiming to follow Jesus for the last 20 years, but you don't see change in their lives. You don't see financial muscle. That person, I doubt if honestly they're following Jesus. For the last 10 years, you can't afford rent, and yet our God is a working God. He commands us to work, and you are just begging all the time you're in church, begging, begging. You are not a disciple of Jesus Christ, because a disciple of Jesus Christ must increase in every aspect of their lives. So I is for increase. A disciple of Jesus Christ must be specific must be specific RS is for specific you must be specifically following Jesus you must be committed to him and you must remember that you are special S is for specific and special Jesus chose you specifically you 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 who is watching me right now and asked you to follow him if you are not following Jesus you need to make a decision to do so but remember that you are special. So disciples of Jesus are not ordinary people. I hear some people say, Jesus chose ordinary people. They were not ordinary people. There was a doctor. Was he ordinary? No, they were fishermen. Those guys were professionals. Professional fishermen. That is not professionalism, according to some people. Some people look at fishermen and they think they are not official. They're not professional. Dear friends, you and I need to remember that Jesus did not just choose ordinary men. He chose men who were professionals in their different fields. So, and as, so as Jesus has chosen you, remember you are special. He created you in his image. He loves you. Following Jesus is special. They will abuse you. They will talk negative about you. They will say all things about you. But remember... You are special. C. Following Jesus needs character. It needs character. And this kind of character leads to character development. You don't just follow Jesus with your bad behavior. No. As you come with your bad behavior, there must be a story of transformation in your life. So C is for character. A disciple of Jesus Christ must be somebody of good character. You start from the extreme where you come with all your bad manners, all your ugliness, all your filth. And along the way, there is transformation. If you're not seeing change of character, change of behavior in your life, you've been saved for a while, you're not seeing change. My brother, my sister, 
Ask yourself, are you actually following Jesus? Are you imitating Jesus? I, as we continue, I, another I, you must show interest to follow. Interest. A disciple of Jesus Christ must have interest in following. Some people have already given up. They're just churchgoers. They're not following Jesus. And let me remind you, friends, it's not about following a certain man of God blindly. The man of God must be imitating Jesus Christ. So I is for interest. You must have interest. That I is also for imitating. Imitate Jesus. In other words, when they see you, they should see Jesus. Show interest in following Jesus. When it's time for fellowship, go. Bible reading, do. Prayer, attend. But some people have lost interest in following Jesus because they don't go to church. They don't do these things. You must be interested in following Jesus and then imitate him. When I see you, do I see Jesus? When you see me, do you see Jesus? But remember, we are on a journey of transformation. I is for interest and imitating. A disciple or discipleship is about purpose. P is for purpose. It must be intentional. What are you wanting to achieve? And let me tell you, friends, it has nothing to do with how much money you have. It has nothing to do with how many vehicles you have. Prosperity is good because God is not a poor God. But that should not be the center or the purpose for discipleship. Discipleship should be helping people become like Jesus Christ. The purpose for discipleship is helping the children of God become like him. Not become like my pastor, not become like, no, not become like, become like Jesus Christ. So discipleship must have purpose. And the purpose is as simple as following Jesus. Discipleship, or a person who is a disciple, there must be loyalty. You must be loyal. You don't shift from here to here to here to here. No, you must be loyal. Choose a church and sit in there and listen. If the church is not making you grow, there could be two issues. Your pastor is not, is not imitating Christ or you have refused to imitate Christ. So there must be loyalty. There are Christians who ship from here to here to here to here. They're looking for miracles, miracle money, miracle this, miracle that. You are not a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are a disciple of money. You are not an imitator of Jesus. You are an imitator of somebody. Stay in a place and be loyal. Serve. Sweep. Do ushering. It is about being loyal. And discipleship, E, is for people who are examples. About exemplary living. After you have been loyal, you learn to be an example. Some people over-exaggerate. When you look at their lives, their lives are not examples at all. Hmm. If Jesus wasn't a good example, we wouldn't be following him. But because he is, a good, he is an, a good example, we follow him. If you're a pastor and you're watching this, if you're a leader and you're watching this, are you a good example? I have an example for people to follow. Now, you might never be a good example at the flip of a finger, but it's a process. Learn to lead. Learn to lead people. Learn to follow Christ. When you follow Christ, he's your example. Then you become an example to those following you. I may not be 100%, but one thing I know is that there are so many young people out there who follow me. One blunder I make, one mistake I make, they follow exactly my example. I'll give an example. Should I wake up one morning and put on jeans with, these jeans with, uh, with scratches, tiger scratches? It will just take, and all the young people in schools will put on. So I am careful even what I put on. Should I just put pull down? Should I pull down like this? And I, I pull down my trouser and I call it balance? Next thing you will know is all the, all the young people that I go to, the schools I go to will be putting on that. Why? 
because they are ex- I, am, I am an example for them, either good or bad. Now, some of you don't know that you're an example for your children, even a parent who is watching. You don't know this. Your children are just doing exactly, you quarrel with, you quarrel with somebody, you quarrel with the father, it's exactly what they will do. Monkey see, monkey do. The common saying, what I see is what I do. So if you're quarreling with, some, with, your, with your husband in front of the children, one day, let me tell you, they will bring back that girl home when she's married because she quarreled with her husband. And you begin binding demons. There's no demon there. It's just your behavior. And some of us go to prayer meetings. I bind the spirit of this. I bind the spirit. Which spirit are you binding? It's just bad manners. Stop behaving like that. Just stop and be a good example to your children. You're dressing short with short skirts. And your children are seeing. It's exactly what they will do. You abuse your driver. You're driving on the road. As you drive, you say, look at this stupid one. It's exactly people in their car. You're giving some students a lift. It's exactly what they will do one day. So be careful. Discipleship is about being an example. If you're not ready to be an example, then stop. Just sit home and stop discipling people. Discipleship, S, is about service. Service is ministry. Ministry is service. Many people... Define service in their own ways. Design, define ministry in their own way. They think that <laughs> ministry is being on the pulpit. It's not. Ministry is beyond that. Even a sweeper in an office is doing ministry. Even someone who sweeps the road is doing ministry. And they're doing service. Even a receptionist is doing ministry. That banker, the security guard at the bank is doing ministry. Is doing service, is serving. So please, mm. discipleship is about service. And some people want to be pushed, they want to be told things to do. And when, after they have done something, they go and talk about it, even on the mal- your microphone, on radio. I know I'm the one who helped so and so. I am the one who does this. I am the one who does this. When you are doing service, you don't have to announce. Your service speaks for you. Like for some of us, we don't have to announce how many people, how many students' lives we have transformed or we have changed. (laughs) God has worked with us to transform many lives. We don't shout about it on radio. We don't shout about it on TV. But for you, one single thing you have done, you bought me a shoe. Eh, I bought for this one a shoe. You you paid my school fees for one term. Eh, I bought a... And you think you're... you're, that That is gossip. Discipleship is about service. H... Discipleship is about humility. The Bible says God lifts up the humble. And what does he do? The opposite is resists the proud. Humility is very important as a disciple of Jesus Christ. When we are in discipleship, we must be humble. When you choose to follow Jesus, be humble. Don't show off. Don't show off to people. You're a disciple of Jesus. Jesus was so humble that he left glory. He left heaven and came. He was born. He suffered. Nobody even knew him that he came from heaven. He was so humble. You, because you bought a Subaru, you are so proud. Because you have a Mercedes-Benz, even put your one hand out of the window to show off. You, because they have given you a lift in a car, you want to every village, every villager, you're waving to every villager, hello, you see me, you see me, just because a lot of pride in you. And what does God do? He resists you. So discipleship is about humility. Now, humility is not about, you know, me, I'm humble. Someone who is humble doesn't even have to speak. Someone who is humble is that rich man who has a shoe of 250,000 but still sweeps the church. That's humility. Humility is that security guard from a very rich family but will still open the gate. Humility is that pastor who comes from a very poor background but does not want to amass wealth for himself. Because some people think that humility is only for no. 
There are those who come from very poor backgrounds, but they are very proud. Just because he has bought one trouser, expensive one, he wants everybody to see it. That is pride. Discipleship is about humility. And we have those who say, when I go, when I finish school, when I finish university, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, I want to show them pride comes before a folly. And not for long, and you begin crying. Hey, they are bewitching me. It's not, bewitch- it's, it's, it's not witchcraft. It is, it is pride. It brings you down. H is for humility. Humility, uh, humility leads us to intelligence. As you are humble, as you are following Jesus Christ, as a disciple, you must be intelligent. You must know <laughs> when you are going in the wrong, di- wrong direction. You must know when your discipler is taking you in the wrong direction. Don't just follow like a sheep to a slaughterhouse. Some of us, we follow our pastors. In the, even when they fall, we fall with them. Let me tell you, Jesus never told you to follow the pastor. He told you to follow him. It's only Paul that says, follow my example as I follow Jesus. And you know why? Because he knew that him and God stretch. Can I, can I say the same about your pastor? Can I say the same about your leader? Can I say the same about your reverend? Can I say the same about the person you're following? That he's so straight that he can never fall. Paul was so dedicated and he knew that no matter what happens, he will only follow Christ Jesus. Don't follow blindly. Have a sense of intelligence. That's why we tell you, study the word of God on a daily basis. Test everything that you are told. Even this that we are teaching is not gospel truth. It must be in line with scripture. So you as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you must be intelligent to know right from wrong and take the right direction. And lastly, discipleship is about price. It has a price attached to it. You lose some things, you gain some things. There are things you must lose. There are things which you have grown up with which are not necessary. You must lose them. And gain other things. There's a price you must pay. Some of the price might be rejection. Some of the price might be lack. Some of the price might be other things, abandonment. But you take your cross and you follow Jesus. So discipleship is about following. And I summarize by saying, in Matthew 28, Jesus says, go therefore, verse 19, and make disciples of all the nations, Make disciples of all the nations. All. And discipleship today is about D, direction, development and dedication. I, for increase. S, for being specific. I know that you're special. C, for character development. I, for showing interest and imitating Jesus only. P, discipleship has a purpose. You must be loyal. You must be exemplary. You must be serving as a disciple. You must be humble as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You must be intelligent, not follow blindly. And you must remember that there's a price to pay. Till we meet again, God bless you. Bye-bye. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.